There's nothing quite like the sound of non-turbocharged EMD 645s, and on this hot and muggy September day, four GP38-2s would be powering Georgia Central Train L781 through the heart of the Peach State. Often overlooked by rail fans, this Genesee and Wyoming short line might be Georgia's best kept secret. Train L781 is a Monday through Friday turn job that operates between Macon and Vidalia. We would be following today's train, which originated in Dublin, back and forth on the west end of the 171 mile long Georgia Central system. From the late 1990s until 2015, Georgia Central was well known for its extensive roster of high hood U23B locomotives. A rail fan favorite, the GC was perhaps one of the most thoroughly documented short lines in the southeast. However, after the U-boats were retired and replaced by EMDs, most of the rail fan community lost interest in this unique short line. Genesee and Wyoming is a short line holding company that owns 122 railroads worldwide. Most rail fans loathe the company's corporate orange, yellow, and black paint scheme. After taking over independent railroads like the Georgia Central, G&W removes the unique identity of each short line by repainting newly acquired locomotives in the corporate scheme. There's the crew. <laughs> At Vidalia Junction, the Georgia Central Main Line meets the heart of Georgia Railroad. The Hog is also a Genesee and Wyoming short line that operates the former Seaboard Airline Railroad Main from Vidalia West towards Cordell, Georgia. From Vidalia to Savannah, the GC operates the former Seaboard Main Line after diverting from the former Macon, Dublin, and Savannah mainline. 
Though the two lines meet here, the hog and the GC rarely interchange. Vidalia is where train L781 meets westbound train L782. The two crews swap power at the yard in order to keep power pooled evenly on both ends of the railroad. Vidalia is essentially the halfway point between Macon and Savannah. From Vidalia, L782 will continue east towards Savannah with the power from L781.
The engineer on train L781 slowly eased the train to a stop at the east end of the yard. Here, she'll be making a few switching moves by setting out some rock cars and a locomotive. Engineer Casey has been with the Georgia Central for several years now. She always seems to have a smile while at the throttle and was very friendly to our crew during the chase. After dropping off the cars and locomotive number 2138, the three GP38-2s will run back to the west end of Vidalia Yard. These three GP38-2s were built in November of 1979 for the ill-fated Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific Railroad, also known as the Rock Island Line. However, due to the impending bankruptcy and collapse of the once great Class 1 railroad company, the locomotives were received by the Chicago and Northwestern Railway instead. They would operate for the C&NW until becoming part of Union Pacific's roster in 1995, where they continued to operate for several years before being acquired by GMTX and most recently by the Georgia Central. At the west end of the yard, the crew of three would grab a cut of empty log cars. These cars are used to haul telephone poles out of the former Cox Industries facility on the north side of town. The train will use the former Georgia and Florida Railroad mainline, which is abandoned a few miles north of Vidalia. The line once ran north out of Madison, Florida, as far as Greenwood, South Carolina. The small section north of Vidalia is being rebuilt and will reconnect the city of Vidalia with Midville by rail when completed. Purchased by Coppers in 2018, the former Cox facility is a massive production site that receives rail service several times per week. 
Large carry lift machines can be seen moving poles throughout the day at the site. Coppers is a global provider of treated wood products, wood treated chemicals, and carbon compounds. They are well known for producing railroad ties in the United States. With the empties in tow, the GC crew tied onto the loaded cars and began to shove them out of the siding onto the main. It's always an interesting sight to see locomotives in the middle of a train, but certain switching maneuvers are made easier by doing so.
the empties in place ready to be loaded with wood poles, the crew will take the loaded cars back to Vidalia Yard. Vidalia is famous for its onions. Historically grown here, Vidalia onions are named after the town and are unusually sweet compared to other types of onions grown in the United States. The Vidalia onion is Georgia's official state vegetable, and the city is quite proud of that honor. Every April, the city hosts the Vidalia Onion Festival a four-day celebration that's packed with fun-filled activities for everyone. Around 1 p.m., 
we heard the familiar sound of an air horn as freight train L782 was slowly making its way into town from Savannah and was ready to swap power with L781. L782 was led by former Southern Railway GP38-2, number 2069, which was rebuilt with a low short hood and was equipped with a Canadian-style e-bell. Trailing behind the Jeep are two Buffalo and Pittsburgh SD40-3s. The former Southern Pacific SD45 car bodies arrived on the property in mid-November of 2019. The locomotives were assigned to the Georgia Central because traffic was expected to skyrocket in 2020. But of course, the COVID-19 pandemic hit, along with some business setbacks, and that caused the traffic demand to decline. Buffalo and Pittsburgh's replacement power for the four SD40-3s are the new SD60Ms that were recently purchased from Larry's Truck and Electric. The SD40-3s are barred from operation between Dublin and Macon because of weight restrictions on certain bridges, and some of the curves are just too sharp for the six axles to handle without derailing. Although locomotive number 458 did go that way when it left the property this year when it was reassigned again to the Alabama Gulf Coast Line. The reason the SD45s are not well liked on the Georgia Central is because they can only use them to switch out two customers on the system. Otherwise, the four axle units handle most of the switching duties along the line. After swapping out power at Vidalia Yard, the trio of non-turbo Jeeps will head back towards Macon with L782's inbound cars in tow. Along the way, the train will stop at several industries to switch out cars.
Kibbe, Georgia is a great spot to capture Georgia Central at speed as they round a long sweeping curve. This rural grade crossing is a rail fan favorite location for the photogenic tunnel of trees along the right of way. Terrytown, Georgia is where the Georgia Central once weighed freight cars. The scale was named after a former railroad employee, Roy Thigpen. The scale is no longer in use. A siding at this location is sometimes used to store rock cars. It's not often that the crews stop here to pick up cars, so our two local guides, Samuel Latham and Blaine Brandenburg, we're surprised to see the train working the siding. With temperatures in the mid-90s, it was certainly toasty outside, but that didn't seem to bother the friendly train crew, who informed us that they would be switching out East Coast asphalt just a few miles to the west.
East Coast Asphalt receives regular service from the Georgia Central and receives large quantities of rock, which is used to make asphalt. Large earth movers are used to move the product around the facility and make for an interesting scene with the locomotives in the background. After grabbing a few more empty cars, the exceptionally long train was ready to continue west out of Terrytown. The train looked and sounded good at Rockledge. Between this location and East Dublin, trains now operate at higher speeds because of track upgrades. Watch the train shake the ground at our next location.
after working East Dublin, the train would depart as the day grew long. The sun was beginning to set in the sky, making lighting conditions favorable throughout the evening.
Dudley is a small Georgian town with a population exceeding 700. This quiet community is no stranger to freight trains, with a long history going back to the turn of the 20th century when the Macon, Dublin, and Savannah first built the railroad here. Montrose would be the last location we caught train L781 before the shadows overtook the main line.
our first chase of the Georgia Central Railway was a success. All thanks to our local rail fan friends and guides, Samuel Latham, Blaine Brandenburg, Jared Blocker, and Bishop Smith. Thank you for watching Delay in Block Productions. We hope you enjoyed this presentation on Genesee and Wyoming's Georgia Central Railway. Until next time, happy railroading from all of us at Delay in Block Productions.